Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to this week. This week's agenda is uh, on uh, identifying solutions to a system of linear equations, classifying systems of linear equations from graphs, graphically solving a system of linear equations from both from uh, both of the form y equal mx plus b and interpreting the graphs of two functions. But before we start that, I would like to pull up something here so that we just have a little discussion on uh, linear equations and some, some of the things that we need to know. Where is my study guide? So before we begin, let me look at this study guide. It says possible number of solutions. Two or more linear equations involving the same variable form a system of equations. But it says two or more. See here? Two or more linear equations involving the same variable form a system of equations. So this this uh this this unit talks about systems of equations. So a solution of a system of equations is an ordered pair, is an ordered pair of numbers that satisfy both equations. The table below summarizes the information about systems of equations. So this is a summary of systems of equations. There are two, there are actually three types of systems. When you have two equations, like you see this line here crossing this other line and it's crossing just one place. See that part? If it's crossing just one place, then we say the solution is consistent and independent. So consistent and independent is regarded as one solution, cross two equations crossing just once. Now, if you have two equations but the lines are the same for example y equal to 2x plus 5 and y equal to 2x plus 5 is line 1 and line 2 have the same they rely on the same equation the like the, the equation makes the lines lie on the same place in your grid then it has infinitely many solutions and we say it is consistent and dependent and finally, if you have two parallel lines, parallel lines, you say they have no solution or inconsistent, inconsistent, uh, the terminology is inconsistent. So the, the terminology we need to come up with today, we need to keep on in our mind is consistent and independent, consistent and dependent, and inconsistent so we let's go back to our equations and see what's happening in this so you're told in question one question one you're told for each ordered pair determine whether it is a solution to the system of equations so how do i determine this now i have an ordered pair i have 4x minus 5y equal to 8 and I also have negative 3x plus 2y equal to 1 so let me write them here 4x minus 5y equal to 8 and negative 3x plus 2y equal to 1 to solve and ensure that it this this first one here to test this first one what I'll do is this is an x this x is 2 and this is a y so I will take these values of x and y and plug them into my equation so I'll plug them in the first equation and the second equation so 4 and the first x x is 2 so 4 times 2 then I will subtract 5 times y and what's the value of y? y is 0 this should be equal to 8 
So let's check. 4 times 2 is 8, minus 5 times 0 is 0. That's good. Now let me check the second equation. It says negative 2, negative 3, sorry, times x. And the value of x is 2, plus 2 times y. And the value of y, you remember, is 0, is equal to 1. So let's see, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 0 is equal to negative 6. So that is not correct. So that means the first one is not correct. Then I move to number 2. Negative 6 and 2. So this is my x and this is my y. And I put them back in all these equations, the two of them. So 4, let me put a space like that. 4, that minus 5y equal to 8. And what is the value of uh, x? x is negative 6. What's the value of y? y is 2. So what is 4 times negative 6? That is negative 24. Minus 5 times that is negative 10. So negative 24 minus 10 is negative uh, 30, 34. So which means this is wrong. If it's wrong, I don't even need to test the second one because that's a no. And I move on to number 3. And number 3 is 4. 4 and then minus 5 equal to 8. So what are the values I have? So the values are negative 4, negative 4, and negative 3. So 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. And then negative 4, negative 5 times that is positive 15. And negative 16 plus positive 15 is 1. So if they say this is 8, then this is wrong. So it means that this is not correct. And then the last one is 4. Let me extend my screen. So the last one becomes 4 minus 5 equal to 8. And now this is 3 and this is a 5. Now 4 times 3 is 12 and then negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. Now negative 12 minus uh, 25 will be a negative number. So it's negative what? Negative 13. Negative 13 is not 8. So this is also no. So what does this mean? This means that this question does not have none of these uh, answers is a system is a system that solves this equation. Does this make sense? Good. So, and this is how you show your work. This is what I will expect you to take a picture of and put in your Google Classroom because this is what will give you more uh, extra credit points. I want to see how you did this. Let's move on to question number two. Now, question number two says, for each system of linear equation shown below, classify the system as consistent dependent, consistent independent, or inconsistent. Then choose the best description of its solution. If the system has exactly one solution, give its solution. So let's let's pull up the other the notes that I just said. Now this is the notes it says consistent independent if the number of solutions are exactly one solution then the system is consistent and independent. So if it has infinitely many solutions, then it is consistent and dependent. If they are parallel, it is no solution 
or inconsistent. So parallel, these ones are parallel. You can see that this, these two are parallel, this and this. They are parallel. So no solution or inconsistent. Okay. Now this one, the two, line one and line two are all lying in the same same place so the answer would be let me go back to my notes and check see that same to this infinitely many solutions infinitely many solutions so they are consistent and dependent so consistent and dependent right here then this other one is uh, let me go back to my notes again it looks like the first one intersecting lines exactly one solution is consistent and independent so i go back and say consistent and independent so now that i've i've got the first lines now you see the first line was the first line this means the system has now if it's inconsistent it means the system has and in my case it has no solution no solution and in this case it has infinitely many solutions infinitely many solutions then this other one consistent and independent it has a unique solution and you know where do you get the unique solution from you get it from this point here this point here so this point, what is the value of x? The value of x here is 0. So the point is 0. And what's the value of y? The value of y is 1, 2, 2. So 0, 2. So this I will get into my Alex and write 0, 2. And that is my answer. So this is how you show your work for all this, for this assignment, this will all be all you do. You'll just be looking for consistent and independent, inconsistent, then consistent and dependent. And if you want to, please pause this video here and then look at all this because this is all you have. So pause this video and look at all this because this will help you a lot in answering the questions of this assignment. Then let's move on to number three. Question three, it says, what does it say? Graph the system below and write its solution. Now you've been given one, as, you see this is the first one here. Let me write it, where is it? This is number one and this is number two. Number two. You're told to graph the two. How do you graph? Remember to graph, you must put an equation in the form y equal to mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your intercept. And the slope should be in form of a fraction. So the first equation says 2x plus y is equal to 2. Now, to get y by itself, I will bring the 2x to the right by subtracting 2x from both sides. So I subtract 2x from both sides. Then I have y is equal to negative 2x plus 2. But this is not a fraction. So I will put it a fraction by dividing by 1. Remember, if you divide by 1, it's the same as just having the, the two, negative 2 by itself. So the meaning is y equal to negative 2 over 1x plus 2. How do I write this in my graphing? Starting from positive 2, I move up to over 1. So up to over 1. So this is negative 2. Now if it's negative 2, I move down. I move down to over 1. If it were positive 2, I would move up to so this is my graphing paper 
and let me just scale it down let me scale the graphing curve this is one this is two this is three four five six so starting from two this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five this is six so starting from two this is two here remember the two should be the one on your on your y axis and this is your x axis this is your y axis this is your x axis and then this is your y axis this is your y axis so i'll start from positive 2 and i move down to down to 1 2 over 1 and over is always to the right so it means that my line should pass between this point and that point. Let me take a line here. Let me take a what color? Let me take a green line. So I'll take a line and then I take a... I don't know how to take a green line. But let me just do this. So it goes like this. And then starting from here, it goes boop, 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 and that's my line. So that's the first line. Let's move on to the second line. The second line is where is the equation? The equation is up here, and the equation says y equal to y equal to one half x minus three. So what does this mean? This means y equal to 1 half x minus 3. This means that starting from negative 3, I move up 1, up 1, and this is positive this time, and this I move over 2. So starting from negative 3, negative 3 in the y-axis, this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, this point here, Starting from negative 3, here, I move up 1, over 2, 1, 2, right here, up 1, over 2. So that is my line, and I draw the line starting from here, like that, boom. So, I can label the lines now. So y equal to 1 half x minus 3. And the other one is y equal to negative 2x plus 2. Now, what is the question now? Note that you can also answer no solution. Over. That's not the question. Graph the system below and write its solution. Now, to write the solution... You simply look for where the two lines have crossed and if you look carefully you'll see that they've crossed here see this point here this is the solution so in my case the solution will be solution is uh, an ordered pair so x is 2 and what is the value of y y is negative 2 so this is my solution. This is my solution. And again, this is how I expect you to show your work. I want to see how you arrange your... First of all, I want to see how you arrange your work in the terms of y equal to mx plus b. How you showed your down or your over, up or over. And then I'll see on your graphing paper. On Delta, on the Alex, I'll only look at how you got the answer correct. Good. Now let me look at the next question. The next question says, here is a system of equations. It says y equal to 2x plus 5 and negative 2x plus y equal to 5. Graph the system, then write its solution. 
Note that you can also answer no solution or infinitely many solutions. Okay, so I'll start with y equal to 2x plus 5. The trick is y equal to, remember we're looking for y equal to mx plus b. And what I'll do is I'll make this uh, a fraction. In my case, it will be y equal to 2 over 1x plus 5. And this means starting from positive 5, start here. Then you move up to, move up to, and then you move over 1. Over 1. So starting from positive 5, let me label my axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8. And the other one will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2. Starting from 5, where is 5? Let me use a uh, what pen, a blue pen. Starting from 5, I move up to, up to, over 1, over 1. So this is where I am right now. Take a line and draw. Starting from 5, I move up to, over 1. This is my line right here. That's the line. That's my line. And then I move to the second equation. The second equation says negative 2, negative 2x plus y is equal to 5. So I have to put it in the form y equal to mx plus b, which means that this x has to move to the right. And to move the x to the right, I do the inverse operation, the opposite operation of negative 2x is positive 2x. So plus 2x plus 2x. So I have y equal to 2x plus 5. Now put this in the form of a, a fraction. I will have y equal to 2 over 1x plus 5. And now this starting from start from 5 and then you move up to and then you move over 1. And again, oh, look at this. This, now look at this. Look at this. What do you notice? That is the same thing. Good. So it means that this line will be on top of the other line. So let me take a line that is on top of that other one. And then I'll use another color. So I'll just put it next to the line. Oh, no, that's not. Where is the, how do you put it? How do you change the color? Let me, let me take this one. So the other line is right here on top of that one. The, the other one is green. This one is green. This one is green like this, and this other one was black. This one was black. Where was it? This one is black. But they're on the same line. Now, if they're on the same line, according to math and according to the previous exercise, we said that they do not, uh, the solution is everywhere. So it has infinitely many solutions. Oopsie, what am I not doing? infinitely many solutions so this here is infinitely many solutions this is your answer does it make sense good so let's look at the last one and the last one here is this here it says rachel can choose wait this is this okay rachel can choose plan A or plan B for her long distance charges. Oh, like right now, there's a lot of long distance calling. For each plan, cost in dollars, cost in dollars depends on minutes used. P 
per month as shown below. So this is the cost in dollars, in the y-axis, and this is the minutes used in the x-axis. So what do they want? Let me see. If Rachel makes 300 minutes of long distance calls for the month, which plan costs more? Plan A or plan B? So she makes 300 minutes. Let me see. So plan A, see plan A starts from zero and moves all the way. Let me draw it so that you see it clearly. Plan A moves all the way like that. And plan B moves like this. Plan B moves like this. And you can see that this is the minutes used and Rachel is making 300 minutes. So let's look at the minutes used. 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200, 225, 250, 275, 300. 300 is the minutes used. So what's happening in the minutes used? So I'll do, what I'll do is I'll pick 300 and go like this, there. So what is this? What does it correspond with? It corresponds with this one here. It corresponds with this one. There. So, She uses three minutes, uh, 300 minutes of long distance calls for the month of which plan costs more. Now, what of plan A? If you extrapolate that, let's go on with 300 minutes to this part here. And this is here. This is the cost here. So one of them costs 20, uh, $24, and the other one costs this one costs twenty-four dollars, and this one costs uh, twenty-eight and thirty-two. What do you think this would be? Now, how to get the the cost there? You would add thirty-two to twenty-eight, and then divide by two. So this would be zero carry one sixty, and then divide that by two, and then get thirty. So this one costs thirty dollars right here because it's between twenty-eight and thirty-two. So that is thirty dollars. So between twenty-eight dollars and thirty dollars, which one is more? Of course, thirty dollars, and thirty dollars is this plan here. This that plan. This is the most expensive plan. I would not go for this plan A. Question: How much more does it cost than the other plan? Remember, it is not asking you how much it costs. It is asking how much more. How much more does it cost? That means that because that costs thirty dollars. And this other one costs $24. How much more? So you'll do $30. $30 minus $24. That is what? $6. So the amount that is costing much more is $6. So here you type in $6. Then we move on to question number B. It asks, for what number of long distance minutes? Do the two plans cost the same? Good question. For what number of long distance minutes do the two plans cost the same? Now, what we'll do is we shall look for the cost where they meet. Now, where they meet is where we want to look. Where do they meet? They meet at... Uh, just a minute. Let me remove this these lines because we've used them already how do you remove the line see now this is why I need my students next to me I don't even know how to remove the line oh there you go oh there you go okay there you go good so the question is let me go back to the question I forgot the question the question is, uh, for what number of long distance minutes do the two plans cost the same? Now, if you look at this point here, this point, the cost is $20 for both plan A and plan B, which means where the two lines meet is where the cost is the same. 
so for what number of long distance minutes so the minutes down here is what they're asking for this uh, number here and this is 200 so I'll go here and type in 200 good if the time spent on long distance calls is less than this amount which plan costs more oh that's a good question if the plan if the time spent on long distance calls is less than this amount so let's say that if the time is 175 what is the cost now let's look at 175 and see what we are get coming up with if it is there so this is plan plan a is cheap so plan a is only is only 18 dollars and plan b is just above 18 maybe 19. now let's go down to 125 and see now 125 plan a is 12 dollars but plan b is what is uh, 18 dollars let's go down here now down here this is 50 minutes plan a is about four dollars what of plan b yeah that's six dollars plan b is fourteen dollars so obviously plan a is cheaper when it is below so plan a would be cheaper plan a would be cheaper so that's how you do the assignments for this week and that's how you show your work please show your work on scratch paper and then take pictures of the scratch paper and post in your google classroom i will give you a place to post them and i wish you the best remember you can always get me online every day from 9 a.m to 12 12 p.m and you can get into google google meets the best way to get me is to get into google meets type in the code for your class and then i'll be there waiting for you you have a nice day and please go wash your hands you've just had a lesson right now i expect you to wash your hands and stay safe goodbye